Hey everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul. Today we have a very special guest. It's JJ from ASUS. How you doing, JJ? I'm doing all right. Thank you. JJ, for asking. JJ's doing all right. Uh, JJ is a little bit under the weather, so um, we're 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 very thankful that he's he's come by today. Um, and he's brought along a, a new piece of hardware from ASUS. Uh, this is something that that you actually teased us with a. a quite a few times over the past, I don't know, six months or a year, but it's actually been in development for quite a bit longer than that. This is the Raider Express. It's a PCI Express SSD. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking a little bit about JJ because this, I feel like this falls into a category that's uh, like just warrants a, a little bit of explanation, I think, from, sure. a, from a design standpoint, um, as you guys have been developing it, as well as from a use case uh, standpoint, because I know there's different people out there who might get a lot of use out of this. Um, but we want to make sure that anyone who's, who's going to be buying this going to be buying it for the right situation. So yeah, um, I definitely agree with that. I mean, our focus first and foremost when we developed the Raider was based on a lot of community feedback that people that were interested in existing PCI SSD solutions wanted something that one, was significantly more compatible, mm -hmm. offered consistently better performance, um, had better interoperability, and had an overall better feature set. So whether it was things like uh, support for UEFI, uh, bootloader policies, uh, whether it was going to be maybe in supplemental software configuration parameters, um, as well as also just having something that was high performance that was PCIe based. So when we went about developing it, we'd look a look at a kind of consensus survey of all the different users that were running different types of platforms. And this is something that we're always doing mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of what we're going to be designing onto a motherboard in terms of feature set or functionality, as well as different types of products that we offer, we have to kind of be conscientious of our entire demographic of users. Mm -hmm. And with storage, the interesting thing is is that you have a lot of different people running a lot of different chipsets. So you know, I myself, like in my system at home, I might have a X79 system, I could have a Z80 system, I could have a P45 system, I could have X58, I could have an AMD box that's using an A90FX. Um, and when you're running all these types of different systems, there's always going to actually be different uh, aspects to your storage performance and functionality. So uh, when you consider that, that's where a PCI SSD based solution actually has a, a lot more flexibility at being able to ensure you a consistent level of performance. Mm. And what I might mean by that is that if let's say I took two SSDs and put them in a RAID 0 on an X79 system, that's great. Current modern generation controllers that are out there have very, very fast uh, performance that can be offered and they can be improved upon to a degree when you incorporate them into a RAID configuration. Uh, but what happens if you're running X58? X58 didn't even natively come with SATA 6G on there. So if you were to run two SATA 6G SSDs on a 3G connection, it's going to be significantly reduced in terms of the maximum performance. And then there comes into question things like, does trim even work? Right? So is the performance for my array going to degrade over time? And so a lot of these questions are what we looked at when we were looking at developing the Raider. So that ultimately we really want to give you a ultra high speed based solution that was going to give you a fast post, a fast boot, and great application performance, but with being very simple and compatible and functional. So okay. that regardless of whatever platform you decided to end up incorporating it into, you were going to have a consistent experience. And that's kind of one of really the big differences is that's not necessarily the truth. With even standard 2.5 inch SSDs, it could vary a lot between the different platforms you work in, where the PCI Express bus is a lot more mature and mm -hmm. consistent across any of the systems you work with. Okay, so uh, excellent high level explanation. That's why I love having JJ here is because I can just ask him the questions I have and then he answers. So uh, let's let's look at this from three perspectives. I'm going to sure. start out with the hardware, so we'll take a closer look at the design and mm -hmm. what's implemented is just from a hardware perspective. Configuration, since you mentioned that uh, having it recognized uh, in a UEFI or in a BIOS situation across a ton of different platforms, I know that takes a lot of uh, a lot of setup, a lot of design work. Um, also, the uh, elements you're mentioning, such as trim. And then we'll talk a little bit more about use cases and uh, specific situations where you think people might install this card and get a lot of benefit out of it. Sure. So um, the card is right here. You can probably see it's a PCI Express expansion slot, expansion card. Uh, uses an X4 interface right there. So right, but it's actually only electrically requires two. Okay. Uh, a buy four solution would be significantly more expensive because, of course, it offered much higher throughput. Okay. So since this is what we want to target towards being a Performance category product, but not an extreme performance category mm -hmm. product. Uh, you don't you don't need to actually have that that uh, PCIe slot operate at by four. It's okay. just the physical interconnect. Uh, it only requires a by two PCI Express in terms of the bandwidth link. Okay, so um, it's also compatible with other uh, PCI Express configurations you might install it to. Uh, we have kind of a disassembled one right here. We've uh, removed some of those different elements, but apart from that, a quick look. You also get uh, the PCI Express Raider SSD 
uh, user's guide, which is going to kind of walk you through installation. You also get a driver disk right here, and you even get an ROG case bed, since yeah. this is uh, an ROG series and product. And we'll talk a bit more about the software disk, because there's actually a lot of supplemental software that ties into adding a lot more value to the Raider as well. Okay. Uh, that definitely also uh, affects even aspects of performance and functionality on the product. Very nice. Okay, we'll come back to that when we talk about use case. So uh, the card itself, uh, you've got a bunch of NAND right here. This looks like uh, to be Toshiba NAND. Yes, it's latest generation 19 nanometer Toshiba-based NAND. Uh, it's a MLC-based memory design, uh, and you're utilizing uh, the latest generation and revision of Sandforce's 2281-based controllers. All right, and you can see two of those by, by, by name, of course. This is the Raider Express. So essentially, you have two SSDs in a, a RAID 0 configuration. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see additional NAND that's there on the back. And uh, apart from this bare board that you can see right here, there was also a fairly substantial heat sink applied to that. So, um, yeah, and that actually came through a lot of community-based feedback. One of uh, the comments for a lot of previous generation uh, PCI SSDs was their instability that sometimes would occur under heavy level usage, mm -hmm. uh, where the actual controller would heat up over time and it would cause inconsistencies to the workload experience. So our feedback from the community was we want to see something that would be very comfortable and reliable in terms of long-term operation. Uh, so we went ahead and we incorporated high performance heat sink here so that we can make sure that even when you're heavily loading it, heavy losing it, uh, heavily uti utilizing it, uh, you're going to get uh, reliable operation because it's going to be cool. Excellent. So uh, there's a look at that heat sink. And then uh, we have sort of a shroud here uh, with some perforations to provide a little bit of airflow. So this is kind of giving a nice finished look, also uh, protecting some of yeah. the hardware and there as now well. Now this one is an, uh, it's an engineering sample, so it doesn't have the ROG eye if you see right here okay. on the one behind one us. In the back. That one does have the ROG eye, so just keep that in mind. And then right here above it, it's got a nice little uh, red LED backlight. So that will be on and it will display that when you have that. And uh, we can't see it here because this one in the engineering sample wasn't final. But if we flip this card over, um, we did also oh. add a little bit of a nice aesthetic touch so it has an actual back plate Very too. Nice so back plate. it looks I nice when it's installed in your system. I, I had not noticed that yet. Okay, so uh, there's a there's kind of a look at the look at the card that you would see. Uh, very clean, so uh, as expansion cards go. And, and then, uh, uh, the radio there will logo. be one more physical item that they won't see, uh, that if we sure. turn this one sideways, they'll be able to more clearly see it right here. And that's going to be one of the first features uh, that I guess we can discuss, and that's going to be a little switch. Oh, nice. Um, so this is the first PCI SSD on the market to actually support native UEFI boot protocols, okay. as opposed to uh, legacy-based protocols. Now, the key advantage that you have with native UEFI support is going to be that when your system powers on, and it goes through what's called the post process. Mm -hmm. In a legacy mode of operation, each individual device has to be um, initialized at a separate time. This causes the post process and the boot process to take longer than it should. Okay. Uh, with a UEFI bootloader, what we can do is we can actually concurrently and all at one time essentially address every single device. Ah, so this nice. allows actually the post speed and the boot speed to be significantly faster. Okay. So in our internal based testing, if let's say you compare this to non-UEFI uh, compliant based PCI SSDs, uh, we can achieve essentially about SSD based post and boot performance. So you're looking uh, you know, on a modern system between about 8 to 12 seconds for your entire post and boot. While on a previous generation PCI SSD, it could be upwards of you know 45 seconds to a minute and a half because it has to sequentially go into to, you know, the motherboard, then the memory, the CPU, the graphics card, the storage array, and it takes a much longer process. There are also special technologies within Windows 7 and Windows 8 uh, that are optimized there for not only performance, but safety. Things like Secure Boot, okay. uh, which are also fully supported on this device when it's in that UEFI mode of operation. So basically, uh, flipping that switch will, be, will go between legacy mode and UEFI mode, and if you have a UEFI BIOS, I know we shouldn't be calling it that, but if yes. you have a UEFI... Then you would um, want to run in that mode. Then you want to run in that mode, and you'll get much faster boot times. But of course, okay. since uh, the, one of the really great benefits of the Raider is to be able to provide high performance across any number of chipsets, and even older chipsets that don't support UEFI, mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why we maintain the high level of compatibility and being able to shift into that seven-second mode. Because like we noted, let's say if you have X58, you don't have any SATA 6G. So buying a SATA 6G SSD uh, and putting them in RAID wouldn't offer you the performance of what the Raider could offer. Uh, but you also don't have a UEFI to be able to take advantage of that bootloader. So this is a great way that you could still get all the speed increase in terms of performance from your system uh, by just dropping into your open PCI Express slot. But you would have to shift it into that compatible mode of operation. Okay. Um, so uh, that, that kind of flows right into the configuration options. So let's uh, talk about first about the, the old way versus the new way. So mm -hmm. if I'm on an older system and I have a BIOS, I don't have a, a UEFI. Um, as far as those legacy uh, boot configurations and, uh, as it's going through the option ROMs and everything, um, how does the Raider 
tie in with older systems in order to provide a smoother uh, experience, especially if I'm going to be booting directly off this drive. That's a, a really great point, and that's actually one of the points that we, we worked really hard on. The way that we've actually implemented the controller is that this board, this board is initialized in pure AHCI protocol mode. Okay. This means that when you go out and you have the Raider installed, it's a fully bootable base device, and the operating system essentially registers that as a single SATA based device. Okay. So that means that when you go through the Windows installation process, you don't have to have like a driver disk to load in mm. and try to initialize that device like you would for classic RAID arrays okay. or for some type of supplemental RAID card uh, or a legacy based PCI SSD. So for all intents and purposes, this is transparent. It's just like if you plugged in a mechanical hard drive or an SSD, it's plug and play. So although this is a RAID configuration, some of those pitfalls that you might have had in the past by having to initialize a drive controller in RAID configuration, like you said, loading uh, loading F6 drivers or that sort of thing. You don't have um, to do any of that. This no is purely a plug and play there. solution. So for users that want great out of the box performance, they're just gonna have to install it into a slot, install their operating system, and they're good to go. They don't have to do anything else. Right. And that would be both under a UEFI based installation, or if they're using an older board that doesn't support that, it would still be the same. It's, okay. it's purely plug and play. And then uh, the other side of that would be if you have a newer system that does have a UEFI, and as we, you kind of already mentioned, flip to the, the UEFI mode, and basically it's gonna show up like any other ser serial ATA connected drive, load, your, load uh, Windows or whatever other OS you want to onto it, and you're pretty much good to go. Yep, that's it. So it's All a very right. simple process. Um, a question about uh, trim support, because mm -hmm. I know that's been a, an issue with uh, RAID configurations in the past. Is trim supported natively on the Raider? Yes, it's natively supported in the Raider, and that's a really good point to make because on previous generation chipsets, dependent on the motherboard manufacturer, the option ROM that's enabled on that motherboard, mm. the driver that's supported for the RST or the management options, and this also holds true for AMD boards, if you guys are AMD board users out there, all that has to be supported to be able to enable trim. So the SSD has to support it, the controller has to support it, the firmware has to support it, mm -hmm. then your serial ATA option ROM has to support it, and then the driver has to support it. If any one of those things don't support trim, yeah. you don't have trim running. Okay. Um, and it's only very recently under, let's say, some of the Z77 base boards, potentially some X79 boards, and all Z87 boards, that you're gonna have trim base based support. Mm. If you're running any variation of those systems, um, then you may not even be able to run trim on your SSD based RAID configuration. Uh, where the Raider, you don't have to worry about that. That's all supported on that hardware level and through the driver model. So as long as you're running either Windows 7 or Windows 8, you have trim support on whatever system you're running. Excellent, so uh, lots of cross-platform compatibility. And uh, let's kind of transition now uh, in, into use case scenarios because um, when we were first taking a look at this, this, this is something that I know I've discussed this card with a few other people outside of work, and um, it's been a question that's come up. If I'm running a newer platform, let's say I have a Z77 or even a Z87 system, mm -hmm. and I have some of the newest and most current gen SSDs that are out there, they've come a long way in the past few Definitely. years. Yeah. This card, I mean, if you're, if you're doing a direct comparison between, say, something there and this particular card, it's not necessarily apples to apples, yeah. but you could theoretically get a, 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 a a rough variant of the type of performance here. So sure, yeah, you could you could consider getting like two like 120s and mm -hmm. read them yourself, and actually even to a higher degree offer maybe a little bit better sequential based performance than you would have with the Raider. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're 100% right, there are different options, and I think for us, the, tar the targeted model as a user, if you're considering something like that, is take a look at the entire picture. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to have to go through the setup process, or do you want something you could just kind of plug in and get better than performance than a single drive for sure, uh, but maybe a little bit lower than the latest generation SSDs in a RAID 0 based configuration. Okay. The other option to also consider with that is that when we get back to the software experience and part of the performance aspect, we have tied in other aspects that can help to improve the performance, such as we do offer our full RAM disk software suite within this. Okay. Um, so if you're somebody that's using a current generation platform, but maybe you didn't buy our ROG series motherboard, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can actually fully create your own RAM disk software, which would offer faster performance than the Raider or any type of SSD the solution for one. Very nice. And we've also leveraged the software to work with what's called our SSD Tweak Control Center. Okay. This can actually work in conjunction with the Raider and we can specialize directory access for high, highly frequently volumes, uh, excuse me, highly frequently accessed volumes in your operating system to run through system memory and offset the write cycles that would occur to the Raider. Oh, okay. So actually the total lifespan of the Raider could be much better than that of a single base SSD um, and while offering improved performance because let's say all your web caching files, mm -hmm. we could accelerate that specifically through just the RAM disk and have that be improved upon versus having to uh, ha keep sending all those write cycles to the actual Raider drive. Um, and there's also a secondary 
primary mode of operation that's called our hybrid disk, which allows us to actually offer SSD caching support as well integrated within the Raider oh, okay. also. So they're, depending on the chips that you may or may not be running uh, and the platform that you may or may not be running, you also get that additional functionality of improving your mechanical hard drive's performance. Um, and depending on how you may configure a system, you can't always concurrently run a RAID and an SSD-based cache, mm -hmm. right? So maybe if you are running a RAID 0 with SSDs, you could still put this in there and still be able to also take advantage of not only the performance that the Raider has to offer as a singular base volume, but you could accelerate the performance of, let's say, like your two or three or four terabyte drive that you attach to it as well. Okay. So uh, since we're on the topic of software, and you mentioned the uh, the uh, RAM caching software that's available, uh, anything else that's also included on this? There display? is also a full one-year version, slices version of Kaspersky antivirus as Very well. Nice. Okay. So, I mean, when you take a look at the total software package, which includes, like I said, that RAM disk software, um, the hybrid caching support functionality, the SSD tweak at console, which also offers a lot of management options. Uh, we have some special modes of operation called IO Booster, mm. where we've carefully analyzed a lot of workload models that allow us to have higher I output based performance uh, and improve the overall application response to different applications. And uh, like I said, in, in conjunction for that special optimization mode where we can leverage the RAM and create that as a cache for the Raider, where we can also extend on the performance. There's a lot of value definitely with it, the software that comes included with Excellent. it. Excellent. Okay, so uh, two more questions for you, JJ. One, uh, just as far as a ballpark performance for this uh, sequential read and writes, um, what type of performance would we expect to see? It'll vary a little bit for this platform, and that's actually an important mm. thing. A lot of people, when they test SSDs, um, they don't realize that if you take different SSDs and you take them on different chipsets, mm -hmm. they perform differently. Oh, yeah. Uh, because there's also differences in the option ROM performance and the C states, which affect hard drive based performance. So, one performance on the Raider will be far more consistent on any platform mm -hmm. than it would be for a standard based SSD because of the PCI Express bus. Um, in terms of its peak overall sequential, Throughput, throughput depends on your application and it'll depend maybe on your motherboard, but you're going to probably be looking at a little bit over 700 megabytes read and write to upwards of over 800 megabytes read and write. Excellent. So, uh, obviously, a pretty big jump up over any uh, current gen. SATA uh, based SSD. Standard based SSD, but maybe a little bit underneath two SSDs in RAID 0 on a modern yeah. uh, on a modern SATA 60 capable okay. chipset. And as you're mentioning, that's not necessarily the positioning of this drive. You're not saying get this drive, it's going to be better than you know than, than that type of configuration. But for folks who might be looking at this drive, since we mentioned the whole wide range of platform compati compatibility that it, ha that it has, um, let's say somebody who's on Z87, maybe you've already got a fast SSD configuration. How might this drive benefit me if I'm in that configuration? What if, what if I just need more fast storage? Well, it, that's definitely an option. It's a simplified solution that you could just drop in there and have very, very fast performance that would still be faster than a single SSD. Okay. Um, the other thing to keep in consideration is that modern generation chipsets are all bandwidth limited to some degree. Uh, so the serial ATA bus in itself, mm -hmm. even on something like Z87 where you have six ports, uh, those ports are uh, linked in with a maximum throughput of approximately 1.6 gigabytes. PCI Express has a heck of a lot more bandwidth. So one interesting thing that you can do actually with the Raiders is that you could raid Raiders. Okay. Um, you could drop multiple of them into the PCI Express bus and keep leveraging performance. So as an example, I've leveraged multiple Raiders and been able to exceed sequential based throughput of over 3.5 gigabytes read and write performance because I'm not constrained uh, mm. like the serial ATA bus is where the serial ATA bus with as little as four SSDs on, on your serial ATA bus, you would already be saturating the bus. Actually, you could probably even do it with almost three SSDs. Wow, okay. So there is some difference in terms of that, but overall, you're going to get fairly a parity experience. I mean, if you talk about application uh, response performance uh, in terms of booting up your operating system and overall just using the system, it's going to seem pretty much parity between the two, but as you noted, um, and as I noted there, with two SSDs on a modern generation chipset, it's going to be a little bit faster sequentially than okay. this platform. Would, would you say that you put RAID in the Raider so you could RAID with your Raider? <laughs> you could definitely go right. that route, yeah. That's, that's the best I got for right now. But uh, <laughs> I think that just about wraps it up for this video. Yeah, that covers uh, most of that. And uh, definitely, um, we'd love to see your guys' feedback definitely on this product. I think we spent a huge amount of time to give you something that was drop-in ready, fast, responsive, and very capable in terms of its functionality. And uh, I can't talk too much more about it, but uh, hopefully if uh, things go well with this product, you're going to see more of the Raider coming Excellent. soon. Excellent. So as JJ said, we'd love to hear your comments and feedback. Post them in the comments section down below. Uh, JJ sometimes will, will lurk around there and post some replies. You'll see him as Asus Illuminati, so uh, that check, would be me. check his channel out as well if you get a chance. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, we've been taking a look at the Asus Raider Express, PCI Express SSD from the ROG series. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. I've been talking with JJ. Thanks again for stopping by, JJ. Thank you. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you all next time.